Hi everyone. So there is a time for everything, even to take medication. Yes. So today we are going to discuss about the chronopharmacology. This is Dr. Manohar from VJS College of Pharmacy. So here we will address the basic questions. Why allergic rhinitis is worse in early morning? Why the most heart attacks happens in the morning? Why rheumatoid arthritis intense pain observed in the on awaking? Why osteoarthritis pain observed in the late portion of the day? Why lipophilic drugs should be given in the morning? Why peptic ulcer pain is intense in the morning? Like this. In this topic, we are going to cover the circadian rhythm, pathways of circadian rhythm, types of rhythms, and physiological functions showing circadian rhythm, and diseases known to display a circadian rhythm, pharmacological applications of various categories of the drugs, antibiotics, antihepatensive, etc., and pharmacokinetic parameters. So, we are going to discuss ADME parameters. Chronopharmacology is a science concerned with the variation in the pharmacological actions of various drugs over biological timing and endogenous periodicities. Investigation of the drug effect upon rhythm, rhythmic characters. It provides most favorable conditions for drug effect for improving treatment. The goal of chronopharmacology is to optimize the therapeutic effect and reduce the adverse drug reactions. So chrono means time. is around day. So oscillations in the biological, physiological, behavioral functions of an organism with a periodicity of 24 hours. The internal biological clock is responsible for eating, sleeping, mating, etc. Endogenous uh, characters are these are going to be inbuilt, self-sustained and it's around 24 hours oscillations. Entrable is, is it can be adjustable, it can be reset, by external factors like light, temperature, etc. Circadian pathway, the biological clock is suprachymatic nuclei which is present in hypothalamus. The suprachymatic nuclei controls the circadian rhythm. The SCN passes the information to pineal gland and the SCN connects with the autonomic nervous system. Melatonin hormone set the sensitivity of endogenous glands. The time of uh, the time of light, duration, wavelength, and intensity of uh, de determine the circadian patterns of. Body. Here we, we discuss about the pathway involved in the circadian rhythm. So light is uh, travel through the retina to retinohypothalamic tract. From this is initiate the suprachiasmatic nuclei which is there in the hypothalamus. Further, it's initiate uh, the paraventricular nuclei and so superior cervical ganglia. Ultimately, it's going to be stimulate the pineal gland which involves in the secretion of the melatonin. Melatonin is synthesize the autonomic nervous system and regulate hormone changes in the body. So here, the spra, uh, here this is the optic nerve. So I from this uh, the light is going to be uh, initiate is travel through this uh, this uh, retinohypothalamic tract and is uh, stimulate the supraventricular nuclei. So this is the key regulator which further stimulates paraventricular nuclei and uh, superior cervical ganglia. So resulting the secretion of this. Pa as melatonin from the pineal gland. So this melatonin is regulate the secretion of various hormones like thyroid etc. On duration of oscillations, the rhythmicity can be categorized as ultradian within 20 hours example ECG and sleep cycle. Circadian between 20 to 28 hours example sleep wake cycle. Infradian premenstrual syndrome before uh, less than 28 hours. Circa septin is for 7 days the worksheet scheme. Circa menstrual, menstrual cycle is the example, duration is 30 days. Circa annual is around 1 year, hibernation period.
secretion of hormones follows circadian rhythm most of the hormones are secreted during the sleep example acth follicle stimulating hormone and cortisol aldosterone etc some of the hormones may secret in the daytime insulin about the diseases is is there any connection between the time and diseases yes there is exactly there is a connection so peptic ulcer disease can be seen because the high acid secretion is going to be present at the midnight so obviously the peptic ulcer pain is going to be high at uh, night then congestive heart failure because the the sympathetic and parasympathetic tone okay so there is a chance of uh, congestive heart failures in the early morning around 3 4 around and uh, effect of asthma is uh, uh, pathetic in early morning that is 5 4 etc then seizures and uh, migraine headache is around uh, 6 or 7 okay sickle cell anemia uh, anemia crisis is seen around 1 o'clock most of this osteoarthritis we can see around the evening 4 o'clock so uh, rheumatoid arthritis is early morning whereas osteoarthritis is late day so all this i mean to say the diseases is also is time dependent so when the diseases are time time dependent why can't the medication should be time dependent keeping this in view so we'll see what are the best time of administration of these various categories of the drugs the antibiotics aminoglycosides gentamicin dobramycin amikacin this has the renal toxicity so it can be this renal toxicity can be reduced by giving this drug as a single daily injection at day time so antibiotics should be given only in the day time anti hypertensive drugs the cmax was high after morning then evening so dosing of the lipophilic uh, drugs nifedipine oral nitrates propranolol the best time is to give in the morning atenolol as this drug is hydrophilic drug so it can be given after morning administration the ac inhibitors were found to be safe and effective when administered at bed time when compared to the morning so depending on the category of the drug we are using the administration of the drug should be varies so that we can have the best therapeutic out, outcome anti cancer drugs the activity of dehydropyridine dehydrogenase in human mononuclear cells increases by the 40% around midnight this enzyme brings about the intracellular uh, catabolism of 5-fluoroacetyl and contributes to the improved tolerability of this drug between uh, uh, 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning so the best uh, time to give this 5-fluoroacetyl is midnight 12 to 4 o'clock then heparin even if given at a constant infusion rate the risk of bleeding is varies it's uh, the day is higher at night so all this heparin drug should be given in the day time because the bleeding chances are high in the night times the topical steroids the anti inflammatory action is maximum in afternoon so steroidal drugs should be prescribed in the afternoon local anesthetics the duration of the local anesthetics was longest when applied around 3 pm the plasma levels of lidocaine were significantly higher in the evening than any other day time so here all this uh, lidocaine drug should be given in the evening antipsychotics chlorpromazine would be most effective in producing sedative and antipsychotic effect when administered at midnight so all the antipsychotic drugs it is it is advised to give in the midnight for the better therapeutic activity haloperidol administration in the evening would be best for the obtaining either sedation or antipsychotic effect opioid analgesics 
The stronger analgic effect were observed when uh, tremadol and dihydrocodone were given in the evening to relieve pain. So peak morphine use occurred at 9 a.m. and least use at uh, 3 a.m. A recent study, Mepiridine, reveals a circadian variation of the Mepiridine-induced analgesia in sickle cell anemia patients. The maximum analgic effect occurs with the morphine dose. So it is always advisable to give the opioid drugs in the evening for the best effect. Chronopharmacokinetics. Okay, let's see whether the pharmacokinetic parameters shows any application in chronopharmacology. So we are going to discuss about the absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. The depending on the pH, gastric emptying, motility and gastrointestinal blood flow, the absorption is going to be depends. The lipophilic drugs are better absorbed in the morning because of the faster gastric emptying time and a higher GI perfusion in the morning. Example of the drugs, valproic acid, indomethacin, ketoprofen are better absorbed in the morning. So always all these drugs should be given prescribed in the, in the, in the uh, early morning. The skin penetration of the lidocaine and prilocaine is better in evening. As we discussed, so this topical, uh, topical anesthetic SR uh, should be given at around 3 p.m. for the better absorption. Distribution. The blood flow depends on the sympathetic and parasympathetic system whose activities are known to be circadian time dependent with the predominant diurnal effect of the sympathetic system. A diurnal increased and nocturnal decrease of the blood flow and local tissue blood flow may explain a possible effect in the drug distribution depending on the dosing time. The plasma concentration of the albumin and alpha-1 glycoprotein in cir circadian time dependent shows the peak around noon. Therefore, the drug should be plasma protein like valproic acid, carbamazepine, diazepine, all these should be have increased in free fraction at night. The, dip, uh, the metabolism depends on the liver enzyme activity and hepatic blood flow. High extraction ratio and metabolism depends on the blood flow. The low extraction ratio metabolism depends on enzyme activity. The hepatic blood flow high in the morning and metabolism reduces at night. The renal physiology functions such as glomerular filtration, renal blood flow, urinary pH and tubular uh, reabsorption show a circadian time dependent uh, difference with higher value during daytime. This video is useful. Thank you.